Hello there! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to another episode of Funky Monkey at the Movies. And as ever, with me is my producer. It was a dark, stormy night. Also, hello. <laughs> yeah, because it's a rather rainy night. Anyway, tonight we have been to see Wonder Woman. And yes, we are both men, but that doesn't change a thing. We still have opinions on this movie, because it is... After all, a comic book movie with action and stuff in it. Anyway, this being so, we shall now proceed to discuss the movie we have just seen. And, let's get it out of the way first. It didn't suck. I was really, really hoping for it not to suck, and it didn't suck. Agree. I think they've actually managed to do a good film for a start. I mean, the main thing being that they didn't just try to go down the Batman route again, which was the problem with the Superman films, I think. They just tried to make it dark and moody. Whereas this had its own kind of dark moments, but it didn't have the same kind of dark and moody tone. Yeah. Well, Batman isn't Superman, and Superman isn't Batman. This much we know. And neither of them are Wonder Woman. <laughs> and neither of them are Wonder Woman, no. I've often envisioned, envisioned it that Superman is the fireman of the DC world. Batman, as the world's greatest detective, is, well, the police. And Wonder Woman is obviously a soldier. We can start with the performances, and they were all of them very good. I think this is the first thing I've actually paid to see Chris Pine in. I mean, I've seen snippets and clips of the uh, Star Trek rebooted movies. I quite enjoyed him in Star Trek. I think he was pretty good. I mean, he didn't have the same kind of tone as, like, say, the original Captain Kirk, but he was quite good in his own way. Mm -hmm. And he was still quite good in this. Yeah. Although I think he was just kind of playing Captain Kirk again. So... I don't know, maybe you could say he hasn't got that much range, perhaps, but um, it was okay for this part. He might even be able to sing. I believe he might have been in a musical, but don't quote me on that. No, yes, actually, he was in a musical, Into the Woods. I don't know if he used his own singing voice. Anyway, yes. I think Al Scott was quite good as well, I think. Um, you know, there were moments of she seems happy and like she was quite she was like genuinely touched by some of the horrors of war and things like that. And of course she was rather the innocent abroad somewhat. I mean I do think that director Patty Jenkins did try and introduce some romantic comedy into the plot. I think the comedy overall because it wasn't just those two. It was there was a, a lot of... I mean, it wasn't a hilarious film, but it was quite long and hard, and the characters were quite funny, which I think um, you haven't seen in the other DC films, which is part of what made this more um, endearing. That, and I'm actually going to be controversial here and suggest that Zack Snyder doesn't know how to make endearing characters, or even possibly write endearing characters. Well, he wrote the story, I think. I'm sure he said at the end, story by Sna Zack Snyder. I was going to call him Snack Snyder then. <laughs> Probably for the best. I think the thing about Snyder, and I'm sorry to descend into more Zack Snyder bashing, but... As we got justice, he deserves it. I mean, the whole thing about Batman versus Superman it was just a bad idea to have Superman and Batman fight on screen just to rehash the great uh, knock-down, drag-out thing from The Dark Knight Returns. Well, ironically, in a film called Batman vs. Superman, I think Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman was a better character in it. The best character in it. Well, she would be. Before the big uh, final scene, she has maybe... Eight to ten minutes of screen time, and she's com she has the 
very few lines, and she doesn't have to be grim or dark at all. One of the things that I like about in this character, or in this film with the character, is while she has got a kind of um, naivety, she's still not like an idiot with it, or immature, or anything like that. But also, you can tell she's like fighting for a particular ideal. She gives her a sense of nobility. You get the sense in some places that she's actually fighting for actual oppressed people rather than just kind of those who claim to be oppressed. You can actually see people in trouble and she's trying to help them. Well, yeah. But Which what... I think a superhero should be a baby. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the score here. Which I think at times was again a little perfunctory, a little um, out of necessity. I don't know, I quite like the score. I, I, I don't know, maybe it wasn't that good, some people might say, but I quite like it. But mainly because I'm a big fan of the Wonder Woman theme tune. Yes. After uh, four decades now of the 77 theme, we finally have a Wonder Woman theme to rival the legendary Superman mark by John Williams and the great Batman themes as uh, penned by Danny Elfman and by the uh, orchestrators of the Batman animated series, the mid-90s. I've got one or two criticisms. Okay. And this might be a spoiler, but when they were talking about the God Killer, I got the sense that she was going to turn out to be the God Killer, not just some poxy sword. And I, I, with all the things she did, I kind of got the sense that that would be something a demigod would do. So I've got a peg that's either going to be the daughter of Zeus or a shock turn around and her be the uh, daughter of Ares. Which turned out to be the daughter of Zeus. Yeah, I think uh, that was something that came in from the new 52, that uh, she was the daughter of Zeus and Hippolyta and... Yeah, well, the thing about that was that in that continuity, the Amazons, as I remember it, had killed all of the men on their island and they didn't really like men. Uh, that was why that continuity wasn't so great. I don't know. I mean... The other thing I didn't like was... I thought Ares was miscast. I mean, I thought he was okay. Um, the guy playing him... David Tulis. Yeah, him. He was okay playing, like, the bumbling disguise character, but he doesn't radiate God of War to me. Especially when he still had the moustache. The moustache was a stupid. Yeah, if you're going to be a uh, God of War, you need to be at least goatee. God exactly. Goatee. Uh. God of War, it's like, it says goatee all over it. Not big moustache. I was expecting some kind of reveal. Of a different actor. You know, some kind of morph of it. I mean, come on, this is Greek gods here. They were essentially the superheroes of their time. Well, that and the North Mythologicals. Yeah. And our theory in legend, obviously. Definitely, but, uh, we won't go into that. We might, if we go and see King Arthur, and we probably won't do that. No, can't see that somehow. We didn't look that good. Also, I'm fairly sure... They probably did that thing that really irritates me and got the sword wrong. You mean Excalibur? Yeah. Right. Didn't pull Excalibur out of the stone. That was a different sword. You had that sword. You broke that sword. Merlin took him to see the lady of the lake. She gave him Excalibur. It didn't come out of a stone. One for anyone who knows their Arthurian legends. But anyway, back to Wonder Woman. Yeah, I think the action was good too. Yeah. Yeah, when it got started. I mean... I hadn't seen the whole slow-mo Matrix thing used for a while, but used it quite well in a lot of places. And obviously, you know, they showed off her power quite a lot. You know, so I thought that was quite good. Yeah. Pacing was pretty good as well. I mean, you might say maybe it spent a bit too long on Thermopolis at the beginning. or Themyscira. Yeah, there. Yeah, Thermopolis was the one out of 300, wasn't it? The gate. The hot gate. Yeah. You know, I always wondered if it wouldn't be better 
if they just remade 300 as some kind of Amazonian story in the DC universe, where 300 Amazons were defending Thermopylae, right. and they were the ones that uh, fell. Hey, you know, it's uh, Amazons being awesome, doing stuff, and kicking butt. Yeah, but everyone loves Spartans too. They gave us the word Spartan. And the comic. Didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, I think it was one of their cities, Laconia or something. Yeah, and they uh, spoke in short, terse sentences. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, I mean, I haven't really followed the comic book character of Wonder Woman as much as I would have liked to. And of course, we should mention that the original Wonder Woman was in World War Two. Yeah, the only thing there is, uh, I mean, she she is kind of like a uh, person out of time character. So if they'd done that in uh, World War Two, they would have compared it to Captain America from the Captain America film, I think. Yeah, but it was a smart move, though, moving her to... World War One, because it could be argued that World War One was a lot more brutal and barbaric, because it was the last war of sort of ancient weapons of horses and swords and the like, and the first war with tanks with uh, modern technology, yeah, like your tanks and your planes and that. So yeah, in the end, though, it's safe to say that Wonder Woman may yet be the saving grace of the DC Extended Universe. Definitely the best DC film I think I've seen. Well, I mean, I suppose it's... The Batman films were quite good in their own way as well. This is almost like a different set. You've got a different Batman there and things like that. But then again, Batman does tend to get rebooted every few years anyway. But he probably won't now because he's part of the DC Extended Universe. So anyway... Uh, final thoughts and scores? I think it should get about eight and a half out of ten. I've forgotten where well, what, really? Superman, what superhero films we've seen this year to compare it to. Well, really, there's only really been uh, Logan, hasn't there? Well, Logan's I don't know. The Galaxy. Yeah. They kind of came to the comic book film. Um, so that goes on the ladder as well. Yeah. All right, then. On uh, the ladder, then. I think... This is probably my favourite film, uh, superhero film of the year. And then probably Guardians of the Galaxy. And Logan. And then Pond. Logan. It's not that it was a bad film. I just... Yeah, it's, it's like just it's very dark. Film. Yeah. It's very dark and more adult. Yeah, I'll go with that. I'll go with that as well. So, for both of us, it's Wonder Woman at the top, then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and then Logan at the bottom. Sorry, dude, but, you know, all the swearing really doesn't do it for us. Both swearing, death, whatever. But yeah, and, um, I thought it was, I had a lot of heart, quite, quite charming, funny, um, good special effects, pacing was reasonably good, um, apart from, like, a little bit of miscasting. I guess it didn't, I didn't like the antagonist that much, but... It was still, it was still pretty good. You yeah. know, and he gave a positive message of, uh, helping people in trouble and saving the world. I mean, they kind of made it cheesy and said, like, through love, but kind of... Compassion. Kind of discovering, um, that there are things worth fighting for, even when there's bad in people. They kind of, there's a balance of good and bad kind of thing. Yeah, like Sam White Gandhi said in uh, The Two Towers, there's some good in this world, Mr. Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. Anyway, this has been Funky Monkey and his nameless producer. All of the e-begging will be in the description on the YouTube video. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.